Um, so my name is Antonia Ruiz, you have learned that. I'm a professor of sociology at Papa Giovanni University. And I've been researching um, nationalism and national identities for uh, more than 30 years now. Uh, I led um, uh, a little research group in Spain for um, Demo Spain that you see there, and you can look for us on the internet. Uh, where you will be able to read some of our findings, and you can also find me on the search. And today, um, I will talk about the relation between the economy, uh, the economic crisis, and changes on national identity. Uh, this is the perception that national identities are probably more exclusive, more restrictive, or not than the world before. That xenophobic and anti-immigrant attitudes are related to this closure of identities and the idea or the understanding that these changes are somehow related to the strengthening of populist radical right parties whose discourse is also uh, nationalistic and xenophobic. I will only briefly touch on the relation between the populist radical right and changes in identity stage. Uh, for most of my time, my talk will be centered on the relation between national identities and the economy and the economic crisis in particular. Uh, within national identities, um, my title refers to the negative uh, identities, and so I need to clarify what do, uh, we mean by that. Uh, Neonative identities refer to um, a particular meaning of national identity, a conception that the national uh, uh, a concession of the national group for the belonging uh, is acquired by genetic characteristic at the moment of birth. And that's why they're called nativists or neo nativists. Um, and they're young, to be xenophobic and anti immigration, and for that reason they are seen as wrong. Uh, however, I would like to clarify further uh, this concept of identities before we can attempt to data. So I will start by Briefly defining, defining national identities in general as a feeling of territorial attachment, and I will clarify its twofold character. Then I will discuss a couple of theories linking the economy and national identity, and trying to discriminate the effects of uh, uh, those uh, economic crises both on the strength and on the meaning of national identity. And then develop the theories, uh, the hypothesis that we we'll put to the test. So, a uh, national identity is a type of social identity. As such, it is the subjective feeling of being part of a group with whose members you believe to share something in common, uh, such as gender, sexual identity, social class, etc. The difference with national identity is that the group is imagined as inhabiting uh, an objective or a bounded territory country, state, a region, etc. Therefore, I will use the term feeling of territorial uh, attachment as synonym of um, national identity. Uh, from an analytical point of view, I will distinguish two dimensions with the national um, identity. The strength of attachment, this is the strength in the feeling of being attached or being part uh, of the root inhabiting uh, a particular territory, and then the meaning of attachment, which is the criteria to be a member of the group when expressed by the elite, or the type of elements that you think to share with other members of the group when expressed by citizens. So regarding the strength, uh, the levels of strength of attachment for a group, there is, has been theorized mainly by political uh, psychologists. Uh, According to them, the weakest link with the group is the cognitive level. In this level, the members of the group only acknowledge the systems of the group, uh, either implicit or explicit, and they also have a broad understanding uh, about some of the elements or traits that the member of the group might have in common with other members, from an ethnia to a common uh, democratic value. This common understanding will be usually more or less ambiguous, allowing for a considerable leverage in how people understand <coughs> or negotiate their belonging to the group. 
uh, the next level, the evaluative level, implies a stronger link with the group. In this level, some characteristics of the group are positive, uh, uh, positively evaluated by the member, and it allows for the uh, group identity to be incorporated into the self-concept. And when you uh, go to this level of identification, the previous one is implicit in this one, because for a group characteristic to be positively evaluated, you have to assume that the group and the characteristic exist. Uh, prior to be national will be in this level. Uh, then you have the cognitive level, which represents the strongest scheme of the group. In this level, actions are oriented toward the group. Uh, it is the level represented in the picture, uh, which is liberty, living the people, but they are part. But you don't need to die for your nation to be uh, oriented toward the group. There are also everyday actions that are group oriented. Uh, such as shopping choices for national products or hanging a flag on your bike. Uh, it is difficult, however, to measure these three levels of identity with uh, standard survey da data. And that is because survey usually measure identity either with a length bipolar scale or with a scale of geographical closeness to different territories. Uh, and how each level of closeness uh, fit within uh, this classification is somehow problematic. So my uh, theory is likely is then uh, for my empirical data and forced to be a little bit less um, uh, precise. Okay, regarding the meaning of attachment, you might have heard and it have been mentioned before about the ethnic or cultural identities versus civic uh, or political identities. In our demonstration group, we prefer to make this classification with another one that distinguishes between ascribed and achievable identities. And make sure these two things, we will have three different possibilities in how people understand uh, their belonging or define the criteria, the criteria of belonging for others. So you will have first the ethnic ascribed identity. And here the group is defined, or think of, uh, as being formed by those who have a particular set of characteristics given a them by birth, and therefore very difficult to change or to acquire later. As they are ascribed by birth, they are nativists or neonativists. So this is the uh, ethnic ascribed identity. This is what I refer to when uh, in the title of the presentation I mentioned neonativist identities. Uh, this type of characteristics that you receive at home birth are things like your ethnic, the color of your skin, your kinship, or your ancestors, etc. And this is the type of identity more close. Uh, if you don't have this characteristic at the moment of your birth, uh, you will be defined as not being part of the national group and all the rights that they are different. Then you have the cultural achievable identity. Here, the group is defi defined or seen of as being formed by those who share a particular set of cultural characteristics and values, like uh, language, a particular religion, some tradition, food, customs, etc. Although it might be difficult in some cases, these are characteristics that can be achieved, and then can be uh, a person can become a part of a um, uh, can integrate in a part of a national group. Uh, but this kind of identity is only more voluntaristic than the other one in theory. You might remember that states have enforced a culturalization and integration, but in a voluntaristic way. And it also can exclude people. Um, even those who want to be part of the national group uh, can be excluded by arguing that they are not um, able or not willing to uh, integrate. And then we have the civic achievable identities. Uh, these are the preferred white uh, 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 intellectual people. Here, the group is defined or think of as being formed by those who have particular set of civic or political uh, values, like respect for human rights, the rule of law, democratic values, economic and political system, 
common civic obligation, and rights, etc. And then, in theory, those who respect uh, these values can be part of the national group. And if the, uh, therefore, this is the less close type of identity. Um, but uh, as the previous one, uh, people can be defined as not willing or able to respect these values, and then this would be excluded from the national group. And this, for example, is the case with the debate on the Muslim faith, which is defined as a, as a sign of gender discrimination and therefore uh, incompatible with democratic values. And there are also other ways how this identity can be taught. Uh, by including in the set of values a particular uh, ones that could exclude people from an ideological point of view. Uh, for example, the democratism will illustrate, where people from a Marxist ideology were uh, pictured as traitor and not patriots. So that would be um, an example. <coughs> so now, regarding the relation between economy and national <coughs> identities I've been talking about, we share here the idea that economic systems belong to what have been defined as banal nationalism. That is, the habits that allow current national states to reproduce themselves. Uh, welfare institutions and services materialize the presence of the state within everyday experience of citizens. Economic and consumption nets um, um, let citizens to be economically dependent on one another and make them aware to be part of the same, uh, therefore fostering a sense of national belonging. Within this understanding, there are two main theories that I will deal with for developing my hypothesis. First, welfare nationalism can be defined as the discourse and ideologies in which welfare and national identity interwin and welfare provision is based on national membership. Uh, this idea is already present in the writing of Deutsch when he argues that by creating good living conditions, uh, governments create attachment to the state. He furthermore asserts that it is necessary not only to uh, maintain well-being, but also uh, to assure a wide redistribution of benefits without, uh, throughout the population. Uh, that seems to suggest that economic crisis or inequality may affect the strength of territorial attachment. He defends that social conflict and disintegrative tendencies uh, emerge when the redistribution of wealth is to skew. Uh, also, from a psychological point of view, Brown suggests that changes in the uh, changes in the meaning of identity. Uh, according to him, the system of inequalities can lead to the, inter uh, to, the uh, to the interpretation of the incompleteness of nationality, and that will usually lead to the redefinition uh, of the understanding of insiders and outsiders, following a more restrictive interpretation of membership. And this is the same idea within the second theory that I will consider, which is uh, the literature of welfare chauvinism. Uh, this literature points in the same direction regarding the consequence of economic crisis on, uh, for the understanding of national identity. Uh, welfare chauvinism is the claim that welfare benefits should be reserved only for those belonging to the national uh, population, the native population. Uh, drawing a clear distinction between us and them. And this is linked not only to immigration, but also to those deemed as to be undeser uh, undeserving in the with this normative uh, logic of welfare operation. So, uh, based on these two theories, uh, I will test the following hypothesis on the strength. Um, okay, so the strength of territorial attachment to the country has worsened on those countries where citizens' perception and expectation about the economy has also worsened, and vice versa. Then citizens with worse perception and expectation about the economy uh, have weaker attachment to the country. On the meaning, uh, my hypothesis are that over the Great Recession period, the meaning of national identity has pivoted to a more uh, ethnic ascribed meanings in countries where the crisis has been deeper. 
and also that over the threat recession period, the meaning of national identity has pivoted more toward uh, ethnic as right meanings in countries where the populist radical right has uh, uh, had has had larger um, popular support. Finally, that the meaning of identity for citizens with worse uh, economic situation pivots toward uh, aspect meaning. Um, more to our article meaning that it is the case with uh, better of citizens. Okay. Uh, for testing this uh, hypothesis, uh, I have chosen a comparative uh, design between Germany on the one hand and Southern European countries uh, in the other <coughs> because of the different impact that the economy has had into, uh, in these two domains. Uh, we have a Mercedes here for Germany and a Seat. National car in it was the national car in States, as an illustration. Um, uh, the comparison has been difficult um, for several reasons, but the most important one is that some of the UK, Southern European countries in our comparison they are not present in the uh, major international database that are, that are best fit for this comparison. Uh, and I'm not quite sure about the reason, but I suspect it has to be with the economic crisis because to uh, carry a uh, um, representative national survey is very expensive. So uh, basically, Southern European countries are only present in Euro barometers because it is compulsory for them to uh, take on those surveys. Uh, other difficulties have to do with the way that um, close strength is measured with the measure that Euro barometers have is closeness to different geographical uh, units, among which the country has been taken here in this study as representing the national state. And I have had further problems to measure meaning, but I will deal with that later. So uh, let's analyze first the crude correlation <coughs> between changes in attachment and economy at the aggregate level. So uh, just to make things clear, um, strength of attachment is measured in a scale that uh, runs from um, one to four. One is not being close at all to four being uh, feeling very close to your country, taken here as a national state. And you see that uh, uh, our set of countries are very different. You have uh, Portugal and Greece with, her, with a, a much larger population, much more strong attached to their country, as compared to Germany, um, uh, Italy, and then Spain, more or less in Germany. If you look at the change in attachment, uh, it doesn't look impressive as per sight because um, uh, what you see is that Greece remains uh, as a country with a stronger attachment. And in general, uh, Southern European countries have a larger attachment uh, to their countries. Uh, however, if we don't look at the um, uh, just at the percentage of people very attached. <coughs> if we look at the marginal changes between these four categories of attachment, um, we see different uh, things. So first, before going into the interpretation of the chart, uh, this is marginal changes between 2006 and 12, which are the year that uh, are in this particular comparison. Um, if a line is to the right-hand side of the skew line, it means that is an increase, it is on the left hand side, it is an increase. Um, the uh, horizontal line represents the um, confidence interval. So if it touches the zero line, it's not significant. If it doesn't touch the zero line, it's significant. Mm -hmm. So Germany is the only country in which the marginal probability of feeling very attached to the country has increased, while all the other categories. Uh, which represent weak uh, attachment has um, decreased, and all the probabilities are significant. 
Then you have Italy and Spain, where most of the changes are not significant. However, the increase in the probability of fee not at all attached. Uh, it is uh, statistically significant for both of them. And then you have Portugal and Greece, where we observe similar trends. Uh, being the two countries in which the attachment was stronger, uh, we observed that the decrease in the percentage of citizens feeling uh, very uh, attached to a country that decrease is significant um, in both countries. And therefore, people living from that category of very attached, they move to uh, weaker uh, categories, and then the increase in those weaker categories is also significant. But how do these chains relate to economy? They, uh, So uh, we can see in these figures how um, uh, citizens' optimism regarding the uh, current situation in their countries has changed in our certain countries. And um, as you can see, as compared to 2006, uh, optimism has increased a lot in Germany, but decreased in Soviet European countries. And, uh, Optimism regarding the future economic situation of the country, and that is evident, but again, you see that how that increased in Germany and decreased in southern um, European countries. Um, here you can see a very general correlation in the, um, between the uh, mean attachment uh, to the country and the worsening in mean optimism regarding the current economic situation. You can see the only, uh, there is a positive correlation in the sense that Germany is the only country where optimism has increased and attachment to the country has also increased, while the uh, southern European countries have uh, decreased both. And this is even clearer <coughs> regarding the future, uh, with the optimism regarding the future. So uh, as optimism goes up, um, attachment in Germany goes up, and then when optimism goes down, um, attachment goes down. So this for the very raw uh, correlation between, uh, at the country level, which is aggregated. Uh, but uh, we also analyze individual data, and you have some photocopies on your folders, where you can see this table, because it's impossible that you can see that here in the, in the screen. So this is table three. Um, and this is an analysis of the uh, individual data uh, to see if this correlation between <coughs> optimism regarding the current uh, situation and future economic situation cost. And we have proceeded by adding <coughs> variables in group to see if that um, correlation is a good predictor of strong uh, of attachment to the country. Uh, as you see in the mobile one, those who feel more optimistic about the current or the future economic situation, we also hold stronger national identity, and this uh, still remain um, significant after we control for other kind of different variables. Uh, so this finding, together with the previous one, which is for the aggregate data, uh, seem to that the hypothesis linked to welfare nationalism in the sense of better economic conditions as perceived by citizens. Uh, uh, I'm on time. Okay. Uh, how are you? So, okay, so this back this hypothesis, and, but there are also some um, indications that uh, welfare chauvinism 
is also a tour because when you are unemployed, your attachment uh, to the country also increase, and when um, inequalities are larger, your attachment to the country also increase. So, uh, regarding uh, the meaning, uh, I will go faster, and you, if you want to ask any question, I can answer uh, later. But the thing is, uh, now here I'm using a different data set because. The other one didn't have question about the meaning of identity. So here I'm using Eurobarometer uh, 77.2 from the job year 2002 and the Intune database. And this is uh, regarding the um, importance of the um, civic achievable identities, and it have increased in all countries except for Portugal and Greece. However, this is uh, compatible. Uh, this is the item is asking about um, a news of items, and we have to rate each of them regarding their importance. Uh, to not important at all, to very important. But you can say at the same time that uh, respect uh, uh, law is very important, at the same time that you say that having ancestor is very important. So I look at the net uh, difference between the two, and again, you see that it is the civic, uh, of the civic achievable identities, um, the water increase. And that means that these um, uh, identities where both dimensions are important are in degrees. Uh, Data from 2010 from a different database show us that Southern European countries are closer to uh, the uh, ethnic um, ascribed type of identity, while Germany is closer to the um, civic uh, and cultural achievable kind uh, of dimension. And very briefly about how to interpret uh, this uh, identity dual um, uh, level. We have that photocopy as well. We see that um, having problems to uh, okay. So those who do not have economic problems are more um, uh, inclined to have a, a key meaning of identities, or the reverse. They have more inclined to have uh, a straight identity. It is um, uh, it's in line with the hypothesis of what we fair chauvinism, where uh, bad economic conditions, one of the consequences is the close uh, of the uh, definition of the national group, as so the exclusion of outsiders, immigrants, or whatever, um, from the idea. Uh, this seems to be uh, a paradox or incompatible with the findings of uh, the new importance of neonatalist attitudes in relation to the um, emergence of um, populist radical right parties. And I have an explanation for that, but I will save that for your questions. <laughs> Thank you.